Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme tutorial. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well today we're going to be stacking elements using absolute positioning and a bit of translate. Really easy to do with the Divi theme. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is enable the Visual Builder so we can build on the front end. I've just got a an image there a row with two columns with an image in one and three of these little number counters in here and obviously you want to check whether it works on the mobile devices so it's responsive so on a tablet it's going to look like this we've got a sort of overlaid with our image there and on a mobile phone we've got them looking like this so let's go back and I'll get rid of these and we'll start again In fact, I'll get rid of that because I've made some adjustments to the column as well. So let's just re-add a new column. I'll put a quick image in there. There we go. And let's get started with our number counters. OK, so I'm going to add a number counter. By default Divi comes with all these modules as standards. It's also got a dozen or so more if you've got WooCommerce in installed. If you want to take it for a test drive you can do so from my affiliate link below this video. So I'm going to add a number counter. Put a simple title in here and a number for it to count to I don't want the percentage sign on there okay let's give it a little background a little blue background make it a little see-through so if it overlaps we, we might want to overlap it with an image or something else you'll still be able to see something through it and let's make our text and our number light in color There we go. And I really only want it to be a little bit wider than the actual number itself there. So let's go down to sizing. Close that one up, go to sizing. And I should think 200 pixels will probably do it. Just put in the 200, it'll put in the pixels for you. And I'll make that the max width also. OK, so we've got that in there. Now let's go to our Advanced tab and we're going to position it. We're going to use some absolute positioning. So you've got Relative, which is pretty much anywhere, the normal sort of default state. Absolute, which it'll float around within its parent container, which is the column that it's in. Or you can have Fixed if you want, and it'll float around the whole width of the screen. As you can see, it's popped off the end there. You can position it that way. Fixed is great for some things, but it's not what we're going to use today. We're just going to use absolute. And for fine tuning, we'll use a bit of translation. So that's fine there. Let's save that. I'm going to clone it twice. So there's three of them. Two little squares there to clone it. One, two. It's just getting darker because they're on top of each other. Now let's go into any one of them. It doesn't matter. And we'll change the numbers. Give it a different title. Let's go to our positioning on this one. Advanced positioning. And we'll plop him over there. And save that one. Let's go to another one. And we'll say sales. whatever number you want there and again let's go to positioning and we'll pop this one over there so you've got them sort of side by side there remember we're we're just using one column here and we managed to get three of our elements side by side there now you can use the up and downs 
but they won't go exactly where you're expecting them to go if you use that. They're great for some things, but today we're going to use a bit of vertical offset. If we go down a little bit here, you can use the vertical offset to make it go up and down, horizontal offset to make it go left and right. So I want mine to go down sort of towards the bottom there. So it's kind of in line with the bottom of the, the image there. That's going to work. Let's go into this next one right here. And again, we'll go over to our position. And again, for the vertical offset, I want to bring them down a little bit right here. Which is great. I kind of want to add a bit of padding. I should have done that to the first one. I kind of want to add a bit of padding to all of them. So let's just quickly go and add some padding. Let's go into our first one and give it 30 top and bottom. Spacing, padding, 30. And hit the oh, little chain there. It'll do the opposite for you. Now I could copy the styles on this and put them to these, but that would change our positioning. So I'm just going to go into each one and do it individually. It won't take a second. Design, spacing, 30 picks, chain, save, rinse and repeat. Might have to offset them a little bit more with positioning now that we've changed the height of them. Design, spacing. Yeah, OK. Let's save that. Let's do this one first. We'll reline it up with the bottom there. Advance, position, vertical offset. I want it about there. And second one, right here. Advanced, position, vertical offset again. Something like that, wherever it is that, that works for you. And if you find one's going behind the other, if we go down a little bit, you can change the Z or the Z index to pull it forward. The higher the number, the more forward it will be. At the moment, all those are absolutely fine for me. OK, well, that's great. But is it going to work on a tablet and on a mobile? Well, let's have a look. Let's go up to our location right here. and. Hover over where it says location in the dark legend there. Hit the little mobile phone icon and it'll give you an option for a tablet and a phone. That's on position right now. Location. Let's have a look on the tablet. That is actually OK. Um, I'm not unhappy with that. But what we're going to need to do is give this column a little more height on a tablet so you can see the whole things. With the one I had earlier, we overlap them on the top. You can always change the position just by flipping the position of it with the little box here. Like I say, it doesn't always go where you expect, but that middle one will just overlap it a little. If you want them all to be overlapped, just simply do that with all of them. I'm going to leave mine right where it was, and I'm going to give a little more space to our column in a moment, just on mobile, on tablet rather. So let's have a look at it now on a phone. OK, that's not going to work. Look at it, it's garbled, completely garbled. So we need to separate those on the phone as well. So let's just save this. Go back out. We'll go into our row, green tab right here. We'll go to design and we'll go to sizing. And we want height, minimum height. Now let's go over, hit the little mobile phone icon again. Go into the tablet. I wanted to add a little bit more there. Let's move this out of the way so you can see it. And you can either type in a value or you can just drag this until it's where about where you want it. So for me on a tablet, that's going to be perfect. And let's have a look on our phone. OK, let's drag this down and give it enough space that we can separate one, two, three of these, a bit like we did on the desktop version. That should pretty much do it there. So we've got that, save that. Now we just need to go back in. 
I think the first one we'll leave where it is. Let's go into the second one here. And we'll go to position again. And we want it to be on the phone. Now, I don't think the vertical offset is going to work for us on this one. Nope. So what we've got to do instead, if I hit Control Z to undo what I just did there. What we want to do instead is go over to our design tab and we'll go to transform. And we'll go to translate, which is the second tab, which basically means move. And we can pull it down this way. If you just uncheck this, because if you don't, it'll do vertical and horizontal or horizontal and vertical, I should say, uncheck that. And we can just pop him down by doing this. And pop him across to where you want him. Something like that. How much space have we got? Let's roll up. Yeah, I think that's going to probably work. Something like that, just a little bit more. You can fine tune with these little arrows here. But that's pretty cool. OK. Now let's go into our third one. And I only want this on mobile. We've gone to the desktop. I translated it on desktop too. So let's go back in there and undo that. Go back to where we were. Design, transform. Second one. And let's reset this to zero. And zero. And hit the mobile. Now this time we want to go to the phone and do exactly what we just did. So let's take this down and across to where we want it. Somewhere like that. We'll save that. Now let's go into our third one. Same thing. Design. Transform. Translate want it on the phone only. There we go. Roll this up so we can see. Uncheck that because I think we just want to do this one on this one. And there we go. The thing I was saying before about it being overlapped, that three is a little faded out behind the one above it. So let's go back to our positioning and bring the Z index up a little bit. There we are, until it pops out on top. There we go, just like that. Fantastic. That's going to work absolutely fine. So let's save our changes. And now quickly test them on the devices. We're on desktop, tablet, and mobile. That's going to work absolutely perfectly. Great. Let's save our draft. And exit the Visual Builder. And there we have it. There's how to overlap elements using absolute positioning. So I hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful. If you have, please ring the bell, share, comment and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.